Hey guys, Percolator. Today we're going to continue our home lab. We are going to be setting up SSL certificates for all of our current and future services. We are going to be doing this with Let's Encrypt and Nginx Proxy Manager. A few things that you need to be made aware of. How we are going to be setting this up, the resources will not be publicly accessible. Also, this means we won't have to punch any holes in our firewall. But we will still have a Let's Encrypt certificate. We will be doing this by setting up DNS records that'll point to local IP addresses instead of pointing to public addresses. Quite a few people are unaware that you can use public DNS like this. Doing this makes it so that you won't have to make your own DNS server just for local DNS. But like we did in the last episode, you can still use this for other benefits like whole network ad blocking. We will also be using duck DNS. And this means that you can save a few bucks on buying a domain and just use duck DNS for your domain. If you would like to use your own domain, that is also an option. However, I'm not going to cover exactly how to do it with every DNS provider. We are going to be using Nginx Proxy Manager, but you can also do the same thing with something like Traffic, Swag, Caddy, or other reverse proxies. Most will work just fine, just as long as it supports DNS01 verification. I think that Nginx Proxy Manager is the most simple and a great reverse proxy to get started with. Since we're going to be using Let's Encrypt, let's go over the two most popular challenge types. All this information is available at Let's Encrypt.org. Normally, when using Let's Encrypt to issue SSL certificates, Let's Encrypt runs a temporary web server and sends a challenge to that server. If the server responds correctly, then you're issued your certificate. This is called a HTTP01. This is great for publicly accessible sites and is the most common challenge. However, there is another. DNS01. This challenge wants you to prove that you have control over the DNS for your domain. This is done by putting a TXT or a text record under that domain name. Let's Encrypt sends a token. Once the token is received by the client, the client creates a text record or TXT record based off of the token and your account key. Once the text record is set, Let's Encrypt queries DNS for that record and if it finds a match, then you can be issued your certificate. DNS all one also allows for wildcard certificates, meaning that we're only gonna really need one for our home lab. So in the previous video, we installed Docker, Portainer, and Pi-hole. However, we are still going to quickly walk through how to install Docker and Portainer. You can skip installing Pi-hole because it's not necessarily in order to get Nginx Proxy Manager to work. You can skip this section of the video if you've been following along. I'm including this so that the video stands on its own without needing to go back and watch other videos. I have went ahead and created another VM in order to show how to install Docker as well as Portainer. This VM just represents whatever machine that you would like to be installing Docker and Portainer onto. In order to start this installation process, I'm gonna go ahead and head over to a terminal. And in this terminal, I'm gonna go ahead and SSH into the machine in which I want to install Docker and Portainer onto. Once we've logged in via SSH, we want to go ahead and update the machine. In order to do this, we're gonna do sudo apt update and and sudo apt disk upgrade. Press enter. You'll be prompted for the password of the user. Once you've done this, you should go ahead and get the updates for this machine. Uh, if it prompts you, go ahead and press enter or press Y and then press enter. On Ubuntu, you will be asked which services should be restarted. In our case, we're just going to go ahead and press tab and press enter to select the default that have already been checked. Once this is done, you should be finished updating the system. Now that we have all of our updates, we're going to head over to docs.docker.com and we're going to look for installing docker engine on ubuntu i'll have this linked in the video description over here on the left hand side you can see many other operating systems in which you can go ahead and install docker onto or distributions under here we're going to go ahead and scroll down until we see installation methods and below that we should see install using the apt repository for simplicity's sake we're just going ahead and copy this command Head back over to our terminal, paste it in, press enter. If you're prompted, go ahead and press Y and press enter. Once this is done, you should have the repository added so that we can install Docker. Head back over to the website, scroll down to where you say where it says install the Docker packages. Here, we're going to ahead and copy this command. Head back over to our command line, paste this in, press enter. If you're prompted, once again, go ahead and press Y and enter. And once this is done, you'll have Docker as well as Docker Compose installed. You may be prompted once again, which services should be restarted. In our case, we're gonna go ahead and just press tab and press okay. 
Once that's done, we'll have Docker as well as Docker Compose installed. The last step to install in Docker is to make sure that Docker works. So we're going to head back over to the website, head down to step three, which is verify that the Docker engine installation is successful by running the Hello World image. We're going to go ahead and down here and click copy, head back to our terminal, paste this in once again, and press enter. Once we've done that, it should go ahead and pop up a message saying hello from Docker. This message shows that your installation appears to be working correctly. Now we've verified that Docker is working successfully, we're going to install Portainer. In order to do this, we're going to head over to docs.portainer.io. The link will be in the description, and we're going to go ahead and scroll down to where it says deployment. Under deployment, we're going to go ahead and copy this command and head over to our terminal. Once we paste this in, we will get an error. This is because we're not part of the Docker user group. In order to add us ourselves to the Docker user group, we're going to do sudo user at user mod dash a capital G the name that we'd like to add us to. So in this case, it'll be the Docker group that we'd like to be added to and the name of our user. Or if you want to add this user, you can do money sign user. Once we've done that, we can see that we are actually part of this group by doing ID right now. It does not show us as part of that group because we're still currently logged in in order to do to check this. We need to refresh our session. We can do this by doing exit and re SSHing in. Once we're re-SSH'd in, we can clear the screen and do an ID. Now, as you can see, we're part of Docker. Now that we're part of Docker, the command that we need to run earlier, Docker volume create portainer data, should work properly. After this, we can go ahead and move on to the next step, which is starting the Docker container. For what we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be using the community edition, and all we need to do to do this is head down here and grab this command, head back to our terminal, paste it in, and press enter. This will pull the image and go ahead and set up Portainer so that it is running. Now that we have Portainer up and running, we just need to access it. In order to do this, we're going to head back over to our web browser, open a new tab, and as I have here, you need to type in HTTPS colon slash slash followed by the IP address of the machine that you have installed on. After that, following colon 9443 or whatever you have your uh, port set to on your host. After you're here, you can go down to advanced, Click advance and then hit accept the risk and continue. Now, all we need to do is set a username and a password. In my case, I'm going to set the username to Berculator and we're going to set the password to something super secure. Once we've done that, we hit press user, great user, excuse me, and we're going to go ahead and press the get started button. Once we're here, it'll show our local portainer instance and click on it. And in here will be our portainer dashboard. Now that we have both Docker as well as Portainer up and running, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to install Nginx Proxy Manager on both. You will only need to create one of these, but I want to show you both, and you can choose whether to use Docker Compose or Portainer. Both have pros and cons, whichever you choose is just personal preference. We're gonna go ahead and install Nginx Proxy Manager using Docker Compose. In order to do this, we're gonna head over to the Nginx Proxy Manager website and go down to where it says Quick Setup. Once here, we're going to go ahead and copy the YAML file and we're going to head back over to our machine. Once here, we're going to do a new directory, mkdir, and we're going to name it something memorable. So we're just going to name it nginx proxy. After that's created, we're going to go ahead and cd into nginx proxy and we're going to go ahead and create our Docker Compose file. In order to do this, we're going to use whatever your favorite text editor. We're just going to be using nano in this case and we're going to name it nano docker slash compose.yml. Once we've done this, we can go ahead and press enter and it'll bring up our nano with our Docker Compose YAML. Paste in what we've copied from the website, press control O, press enter. After that, we can go ahead and press control X to exit. Now that we've done that, we can head over to the website again and go down to where it says Docker Compose up dash D, copy this, head on over to our terminal, paste it, and press enter. Once we've done this, we could go ahead and see that it's going to spin up our container using Nginx Proxy Manager. Now we can check to make sure the Nginx Proxy Manager is up and running properly. In order to do this, we're going to head over to our web browser. Once here, we're going to open a new tab and enter the IP address of the machine that we installed Nginx Proxy Manager onto. For me, this is going to be 192.168.0.31. And then we're going to add a colon 81 to it. This is where the UI for Nginx Proxy Manager lives. Once you've done that, go ahead and press enter and you should be greeted with a login screen saying to log in to Nginx Proxy Manager. We're going to be covering the next few steps after I've covered how to install it using Portainer. To install Nginx Proxy Manager using Portainer, it's pretty simple. In order to do this, we're going to go ahead over to Stacks, 
once in stacks, we're gonna go to add stack and we're gonna give it a name. I'm going to name this engine X proxy. After that, we're going to head over to the engine X proxy manager website. This link will be in the video description. Once here, we're going to copy the Docker compose YAML. After we've done that, we're gonna head back over to Portainer and paste it in. Now that we've done that, all we need to do is go down here to deploy the stack. After a bit of time has passed, you'll get a notification up here saying that success stack has successfully deployed. Now that the container has started up successfully, we need to access Nginx Proxy Manager. In order to do this, we go ahead and create a new tab and go to the IP address of the machine that we installed it on. So in my case, this would be 192.168.0.30. And then we're going to give it a colon 81 as the port. After a second, it should pop up the UI and ask you for a login. From here on, it does not matter whether you installed using Docker Compose or Portainer. In order to log in, we're going to head over to the Nginx Proxy website. Once we're here, we're going to go down to where it says default admin user. From here, we're going to go ahead and copy the email address and paste it in. After we have it copied and pasted, we're going to go back and grab the password, which is just change me. Once we have both of these pasted in, we can go ahead and press sign in. On sign in, we're going to be prompted to edit the user. We want to go ahead and change all of this information so that it's something of our own. In my case, I'm going to be naming it Perculator. And we're going to give it a nickname of also Perculator. After that, we're going to go ahead and enter our email address. After you have your email address entered, we're going to head and press save. Now you'll be prompted to change the password. You can go ahead and paste that password in, which is change me. And you can go ahead and create a new super secure password. Now that we have our password changed, all we have to do is go ahead and press save. Then we'll be presented with our user. As you can see, my name is Perculator, my email address is listed here, and my role is administrator. Now that we have Nginx Proxy Manager up and running, we're gonna go ahead and head over to DuckDNS. Once on DuckDNS, go ahead and log in. Once you're logged in, you can go down here to where it says domains, and over here you need to type in some kind of domain that you would like to name this. In my case, I'm gonna be naming it Perculator, and press the button that says hide domain. Once a domain is added, we can head over to where it says current IP address and get rid of it. And we're going to enter the IP address of the machine that we have Nginx Proxy Manager set up on. In my case, this is going to be 192.168.0.30. And then we're going to press the button that says update IP. As far as DNS goes, that's all we need to do. You can also do this with other DNS providers. However, we're only going to be covering how to do it with DNS. Now that we have DNS configured, we're going to head over to Nginx Proxy Manager. Once here, we're going to go to SSL Certificates and click Add SSL Certificate. Under Domain Names, we're going to go ahead and add in the domain name that we have created. In my case, percolator.dns.org and press Enter. After that, we're going to go ahead and put a star dot and also put this behind this. This is going to be our wildcard. After that, we can go ahead and press Enter. And then we're gonna go down to where it says, I would like to use a DNS challenge. Once we've done that, we want to go to DNS provider and we wanna select DuckDNS. After selecting DuckDNS, we head back over to DuckDNS and we need to copy this token. After we've copied this token, head back to Nginx Proxy Manager and go to where it says DNS underscore DuckDNS underscore token equals your DNS token. From here, we're going to go ahead and delete after the equal sign and paste in our DNS token. After this, we're going to go ahead and set the propagation time to 120. I've seen that this does tend to help out a little bit. And then we're going to check the box that says, I agree to let's encrypt the term of service. After we've done this, we're going to go ahead and press save. This may take a few minutes to process. As you can see, I ended up with an error. This error is not completely my fault. And if you get it, it's not completely yours. This is due to DNS not propagating out quickly enough. In order to resolve this, I'm just gonna wait a few minutes and try again. After waiting a few minutes and then trying again, as you can see, mine is now successful and I now have my SSL certificate. Now that we have our SSL certificate, we can go ahead and start adding our services. The first service that I would like to go ahead and add is going to be Megatron. Megatron is my Proxmox node and I want to be able to access it via a SSL certificate. In order to do this, we're gonna head over to Nginx Proxy Manager, go to host and head to proxy host. Once here, we're going to press add proxy host. Now we can set our domain name. Your domain name should be a subdomain followed by your fully qualified domain name. 
Mine, for instance, will be megatron.percolator.duckdns.org. Once you've done this, go ahead and press enter and it'll turn into a little gray box. After that, we can go ahead and set the scheme. And since we're already using HTTPS, we can select HTTPS and then we will enter the IP address of the service that we want to add. In my case, it'll be 192.168.0.14. And we need to add the port for that service. In Proxmox's case, it'll be 8006. Once we have that set, we can go ahead and hit block common exploits if we would like, and we can check on a few of these, but that's kind of up to you. In my case, I'm just going to leave this and I'm gonna go ahead and click WebSocket support. Now we need to go over to the SSL tab. From here, go to the drop down menu and select your SSL certificate. After that, we can do force SSL if we'd like to force it, and you can look into a couple of these other settings if you would like, but for what we're doing, this will be working completely fine. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and press save, and we'll get an entry under here. This new entry, we can go over to this box that says the domain name and click on it, and it will take us to that service. From here, if we go up to our URL, box, we can see that's verified by Let's Encrypt. If we click on it and click Secure Connection in Firefox, we can see it is in fact verified by Let's Encrypt, and we can get more information if we need that here. Next, I'm going to be setting up a portainer in this. So we're going to head back to Nginx Proxy Manager, and we're going to go up to this button that says Add Proxy Host. Now that we're here, we go ahead and set up a domain name just as we did before. Now that we have our domain name set up, we can go down to Scheme. And in this case, we can go check it uh, and we can see that it's HTTPS. So we want to select HTTPS and we want to go ahead and enter the IP address. This will be 192.168.0.30 for me. And we need to set the port. So we know that this is, oh, look, 9443. So we're going to go ahead and set this to 9443. After that, we're going to go ahead and click a couple of these boxes like block plumbing exploits and WebSocket support. And then we're going to head back over to SSL just like we did before and select our SSL certificate. From here, we can click force SSL and press save. Now that we have that done, all we have to do, just like before, is click where it says portainer.percolator.duckdns.org and it'll take us to our portainer. It will make us log in again. But once again, if we go up to the lock, we can see that we have a secure connection and it's verified by LexEncrypt. Now we're going to be setting up the SSL certificate for PyHole. This one is the most complicated. In order to set this one up, we're going to go ahead and do add prox host. Then we're going to be giving it a domain name. Once we have the domain name set, we go ahead and do like we had before. And we're going to enter the IP address. And we're going to set the port. Once we have all that done, we can go ahead and click the WebSockets button and block plumbing exploits as we have in the past. And go up to SSL. Once we're at SSL, we can go down to percolator.dns and click it. Then we can click force SSL. Once we've done this, we can go ahead and press save. Now, if we go ahead and click this, it'll give us a 403 forbidden. In order to fix this, we can go to this Reddit post that I'll have linked in the video description, and we can go ahead and copy this part of the post. Once we have that copied, we can go over here to edit, go to advanced, and paste this in. Up here where it says Pihole IP address, we need to go ahead and set the Pihole IP address. In my case, that'll be 192.168.30. 0 0.30 and then the port we're going to go ahead and set as 8080 once we have this done and we make sure that everything looks all right we go ahead and press save and now we should be taken to our pothole instance the last ssl certificate we're going to be setting up today is a bit of inception we're going to be setting up our proxy manager inside of our proxy in order to do this we're going to go to add proxy host then here we're going to enter our domain name once we have our domain name added, we can go ahead and enter the IP address. And we can go ahead and set our port number. In my case, that's port 81. From here, we can go ahead and check the box that says block common exploits and WebSocket supports. From there, we can go to SSL and select our certificate. Once we've done this, we can go ahead and press save. And that should be all we need to do. If we click the proxy button, it'll take us to our Nginx proxy manager. Now that we have showed you a few examples, in the future, you should be able to add your own services to Nginx proxy manager. That's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed it, or if you learned something, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps motivate me into making more videos in the future. Also, some feedback on what I can improve and topics that you would like to see in the future is greatly appreciated. Thank you for watching.